The Laughter Permitted Podcast is brought to you by Ally. Do it right. Hello! Welcome to season double number one. That's right. Season 11 of Laughter Permitted. I'm Julie Foudy. I'm Lil Zowie, and I have a big smile on my face right now. Double number <laughs> one. We Oh my gosh. Let's go. I'm going to tee you up for a story, Julie, and this story has got to be somewhere in the catalog of Laughter Permitted episodes. But Jules, yeah. if you could once again share why you wore double number one, as opposed to, mm-hmm. as Mia Hamm put it, just 11. You're just 11, Julie. You're not double number one, Julie. Um, as any self-respecting seven-year-old would do, you want to be number one when you get on your first soccer team. And so I said to my coach, I would like to wear number one. <laughs> and this coach said, well, that's for the goalkeepers. And I said, what? <laughs> and he said, that's a number that we save for the goalkeepers. Cause that's how they do it in soccer. And I said, well, then I will be double number one. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any sense of my personality at seven, there it is on full display. Well, then I will be double number one. If that's not a Nike so, commercial, I don't know what is. I uh, always used to remind the national team that I was double number one. And Mia would say, no, you're just 11. <laughs> <laughs> in her deadpan way no you're not <laughs> oh look at this we're already laughing we're already mm. laughing we're back it's a good sign and it is so fitting to start season 11 with a player who went on to wear your exact number on the u.s women's national team that's right. Actually, when I emailed Allie, do you want to come on the pod and launch us this year? She was, She said, it's only fitting that the, the double number ones do it together. I was like, that's right, baby. Let's go. So, y'all, Allie Krieger is in the house. I am so grateful for Krieg's making this season opener so special. It's a great conversation. Y'all know Allie from her days on the U.S. Women's National Team where she won two World Cup titles. She reached 108, so she has over 100 caps with the U.S. Women's National Team. And this past year, she finished off her professional soccer career by going out as a champion again. Her Gotham FC squad won the NWSL championship last season and in incredible fashion. They went from last place in 2022 to top of the mountain in 2023. So from worst to first, and it's been quite a year for Ali on so many levels personally and professionally and i just loved getting to catch up with her so get comfortable listening it's ali krieger kick back relax and unwind let's have a good time finding the joy in life we're smiling so bright talking and laughing combined feeling all right Kriegs, as you know, we realistically could not start season number 11 without double number ones on the pod. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Okay, set the scene, where you're at, what you're doing. So I'm in my new place. I'm getting a fresh start and fresh (laughs) energy, and it's so nice to be um yeah in a new home and um the kids are loving it um my my pup is loving it and we're just yeah already really happy here so i'm in the you know midst of setting everything up and still getting things organized which will take you know probably another few weeks Uh, i was gonna say seven years (laughs) if you're anything like me (laughs) exactly but i feel like when your house is organized you you know a clean house clear mind so i have to to do that as quick as possible because i'm gonna be all over the place yeah but i'm in a new space and it's great and i'm on the kind of in my office area that i'm setting up good yay refresh reboot 
Are you in the home goods space where just you're living at home goods? Mm hmm. And Amazon and TikTok, like, you know, uh, organizing. Oh, right. I guess all the organizers on TikTok really help because then they have links to all the things. And so it gets a little dangerous because Amazon can be, you yeah. know, one stop shop, obviously. And um, yeah, getting things at my doorstep really makes me happy in the moment. But then I look at the bill and I'm like, OK, I need to <laughs> rein it in. <laughs> I need to stop. I love doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. I might yeah. visit Home Goods three times a week. <laughs> just walking around with a coffee and just checking the scene. Literally, my husband is like, "Where are you?" And I'm like, um. <laughs> "He's like, are you at Home Goods?" I'm like, "Maybe." No, but when I go to Target, that's the worst because even oh, if they have Starbucks in the Target, and then you you get a coffee, and then you walk around, and you only go in for like eye drops, and you come out with like a whole. <laughs> cart full of three hundred dollars later even... yeah. yeah shit you don't need all right first and foremost before we ask anything is how are you busy yeah but yeah no i'm great i'm honestly in a really good space mentally emotionally i, I feel like i've kind of crossed that line into the next phase mm -hmm. where i am you know at you know, still in my healing process with everything going on, but I'm really in a good space to move forward and to start, you know, a new, a new job and in, in this new broadcasting world, it's been really hard. So Jules, we're going to have to, you know, connect at some point. Oh, we're going to talk about that too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy you went, went to the dark side. Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm following you. So you make it easy. Uh... I, need, I need some help. Um, no, but like all jokes aside, like it's actually been really good because I don't think I'm really the retirement type. Like it lasted like maybe a minute. And then I was like, this is not, I, mean, I, I, I've, I have been nonstop since the final. So um, it's yeah. all good things. Like it's a good busy. It is a good busy. Cause sometimes there's like that bad busy where you're just trying to avoid, you know, thinking about things, but it's a good yeah. busy. Yeah. And I, yeah, I feel personally like I'm in a really good space, much better than, you know, obviously um, in like August, September, you know, October ish. So now I'm, I'm really doing well and the kids are settled and happy and yeah. that's really what's most important. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I think about. It's one thing, right. To go through something like that mm -hmm. when you don't have kids, but then you add kids into the equation and it's like, you just got to make sure like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's... I, um, I feel like that was, you know, it's really hard for them because, you don't realize like even though they're young you're like oh they'll be fine like they're gonna get through this mm -hmm. with us and um you know discovering this whole co-parenting thing and you know they're my priority so i don't want to always assume that they're going to be okay so i'd really mm -hmm. try to make it as easy as i can this process and this move and this new phase um, and really take like their feelings into account more importantly than even mine because I remember when my parents got divorced when I was really young and I'm still, mm -hmm. you know, trying to, yeah. you know, solve or heal that trauma, I should say. Oh, interesting. Even from yeah. that, even when you're really young, you like, oh, they're going to be fine. You know, well, you know, yeah. I actually am still healing from things that have occurred. Maybe you don't even realize. So I understand that and I want them to, you know, make sure that I, you know, hear them and see them and you know, understand their feelings as well, because it's going to be tough, even though they're only three and one and a half. Yeah. 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 Before we go into the broadcasting side of it, which I definitely want to talk about, mm -hmm. I, I want to rewind to, to Gotham because <laughs> holy shit. I, I mean, that season mm -hmm. for y'all going from worst to first, yeah. what, what was it about the team, the group that made it possible? I think the locker room. And it did have a lot to do with football, right? Like the actual playing, it had a lot to do with that on the field and the leadership, obviously, with Juan, which I've said, and I'm sure you guys have heard that in the media, but the leadership and the quality of the staff set us up truly for success yeah. because we had similar players the year before, right? We just had to fill a few holes. Yeah, they were, you know, big shoes to fill or big holes to fill, and we found some great players to do so. But I think just it stems from the guidance of having an identity, how to apply what the principles are on the field physically. Um, but then for us, 
I am so proud of our connection as a team and as individual players where we could come together as human beings first mm. and really care about each other. And I, I found that out quickly when I was going through exactly what I went through um, and the separation, mm -hmm. you know, and the filing and everything. They just rallied around me. So that's mm. just one example of, you know, the commitment to each other that we wanted to make sure that everyone was OK, even off the field. The care and the concern as human beings was first. And mm -hmm. that's rare. I don't think I've been on a lot of teams that have thought that except maybe the national team um, at some points in my career. And so that was refreshing to know mm. that you could look around the locker room and we were all connected as, wow. you know, as friends, I should say, first. And then that translated onto the field and building those relationships. Because, you know, those relationships are yeah, so difficult everything. to build. Yeah. Just with soccer-wise. But then yeah. human-wise, that was already there. And that was so important to us, that respect, that that just translated immediately, which I think you saw in the play. When I, when I read the post-divorce leak team dance party oh story God. with them yeah. all just rolling in that day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know when you found out practice. right after training because I had to yeah. cancel the presser I had to cancel right. my press because you were going so into your final match right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when I read that story and you can tell it I was like it told me everything I needed to know about that team I was like there it is that's why they won mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. <laughs> and you just confirmed it I'm like yeah. they the locker room can you tell that story Ellie yeah, so um, a lot of people don't think that I did actually find out online, which was tough to read because, you know, this is my truth and my experience, and it's the truth. I was playing 11 v 11, and I actually had to come off the field because I remember Midge coming up and um, asking me to step off the field, and I thought she was, like, injured or something. I'm like, why am I having to step off the field? Like, are you okay? Like, is everything all right? Because she had been inside just getting some treatment. And had maybe just limited minutes that day. But anyway, besides the point, she comes up to me and says, there's an article out. I said, about what? I said, what are you talking about? What article about? What is this? Like, can you give me a little more info about you, about like the tea? What's going on? Um, and she said, no, about you and Ash and your divorce. And I said, what divorce? I said, what filing? And she goes, no, it's on people.com. Like, like it's, it's out. And I said, oh, God, because I had kept it very quiet, obvious for obvious reasons. One, it's not a community divorce and marriage, first and foremost. It's not for everyone to know. I'm a very private person, even though, yeah, I did share my life online a lot with the kids and, and Ash, but I'm a very pri private person for this exact reason. And I value having that privacy um, in such like an intimate relationship with your partner. I think it's really mm -hmm. important because it's not for everyone, everyone to know and it's not everyone's business. So then when this came out, I was like, and immediately I kind of shut down. And I think Kelly was on the sideline and maybe Taylor and it was Midge. And we they just took me into the locker room. I didn't even say anything to the coaches. I just walked in the locker room and then I, yeah, I broke down because it was the first time I had even heard of a filing. Wow. Yeah. And um, in that moment, three days before you know, one of the biggest games of my life because it could have been my last. Yeah, because you guys weren't in the playoffs yet. No, we had to squeak right. in. You know, that right. was that was that was a must. A great win, point, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we tied and we we got in barely, but that was to me a must win. So in that moment, it was difficult. And then I canceled all the pressers that day. I had everything lined up after training. Um, obviously, everyone understood because they saw it, and I just went home. And then the team didn't even have to say anything. They they came right over. They just started walking in at three because they had meetings. We had like, um, you know, IDP meetings and positional meetings uh, that day and line meetings, I should say. And I, I just skipped it all. I went home and then they just came over after. So by that time it was like three, three thirty, and they just kept trickling in. And I was mm -hmm. actually having I scheduled a fitting because I wanted to look nice for the party. And, you know, I was like, you know, this is going to be a moment that I, I want to remember. And I want to, you know, I want to like put myself 
first and for once and and do something nice for myself so i actually had my stylist come over and we were going through outfits and things and all the girls were actually there by that time and i would come and i would run and you know show them the outfit and they would be like yeah or like "Eh," you know and so they helped me choose like all the outfits that you know that i wore for that photo shoot on that next day which was the next day i think it was the thursday and you know in the new york city you know photos and and then for the you know pregame walk and then also for the after party so i had some you know i had some outfits to choose and they were like loving it so all of them were sitting in the playroom and i have a tv <laughs> in there obviously for the kids and it's right off the kitchen so we were all they were all just sitting on the ground on like the kids like pillows the kids are hanging out they were bringing wine in and flowers and everyone's <laughs> drinking and having a good time listening to like youtube music videos and we all start dancing to some of them. Like everyone gets up and we're just, I mean, I have Aww. videos that I'll cherish forever from that night because they stayed until like two, two thirty in the morning. Ugh. By the end of the night, we were all laughing and having the best time that I was like, why did we wait this long to do this? And I'm sorry that we finally have done this on my <laughs> behalf. That was like <laughs> such a shitty day. But I, I knew right then I said, this is something special that we have here yeah. and we're going to win this thing. If we continue in this manner together yeah. and like share these moments, um, we're going to, we're going to be just fine. Uh, That's incredible. They were like, we got you. We got you. Yeah. Right? It was, everybody just kept walking in. Cause it was different. There was uh. an appearance, I think at a coffee shop down the street that I think some of the girls had. And, um, right from there, they, they came over and, you should have seen all the shoes at the front door. It was just, um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a really, really cool memory that I'll cherish forever on such an unfortunate day, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like that reflected something back to you, Allie, as far as the type of teammate you are and have been in your career? Yeah, I, yes, yes. Yes, I, um, yes, I, I, I knew then because you don't really know, and I'm sure, Jules, you feel this way too, like you don't really know the type of impact you make until people, you know, mm-hmm. talk about you in interviews or, you know, they're, they're celebrating you because of your retirement or, you know, like you don't, I don't know, I, you don't necessarily yeah. really deep down understand the impact you have on, on people as friends and teammates and coaches and staff until like this moment in my career, I was like, wow, like I feel almost, almost like not embarrassed, but almost uncomfortable Mm-hmm. to a point where I was so um, showered with love and um, and support. And I don't know, it almost felt like I was like, wow, this is, I never really realized. And this is nice that I have that type of impact on people because that's everything that I've wanted to be. Like just like first yeah. a good human being and a good teammate and somebody who, you know, someone can lean on and come to for anything and also put smiles on people's faces. Like that's, that's really ultimately, and then obviously win championships, but that's most important to me. And so to see that reciprocated, I was like, wow, I, I'm going to definitely be okay. (laughs) Now I'm curious what the locker room dance party was like after you won (laughs) it was so like it was drenched in there there's like beer everywhere (laughs) champagne everywhere people are like slipping i'm like so worried i'm gonna like you know tear my hamstring (laughs) off because i'm like you know like just sliding everywhere and people are just like diving around and you know i don't the goggles barely even worked all the all the beer and the drinks were like inside my goggles. It's like when you're scuba diving and you, or <laughs> yeah. snorkeling, you know. And you're like, these are not working. Yeah. So we had a really good a really good time because people were taking pictures and like, you know, it was really fun. That was amazing too. That it was you and Pino in your final match, as close as you two are. Yeah. Neither of you had won an NWSL title, and of course, mm. only one was gonna was gonna take it before they retired. Yeah. Did you guys? You must have had so many special moments. But what 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 is that moment and memory that that shines through the most? 
I think just sharing the field with her again, because I had missed her, even though it was devastating mm-hmm. for her in the first, obviously, five minutes and the way that yeah. that happened, I, I literally was so upset because it changes the game immediately. You want to play against the best players. You want to play against their best team because in the end, that's even more rewarding to win. And so mm-hmm. I obviously want to play against the best all the time. That's just like the competitiveness in me. Um, and the game completely changed after that. Not that it wasn't difficult, but it just you know, you just had to shift uh, a little bit of the mindset and the personnel and and figuring that out. But it was probably just sharing the field with her again and walking out on the field with her again because I loved it so much being her teammate on the national team and just winning with her and laughing and uh, supporting each other and over the years and um, having, you know, just this deep, deep friendship that we have. And being able to share the field with her again was nice on the final day. And I'm glad that it was her. I'm really sad to to see what had happened because it's just so unfair. Life sometimes is just so unfair, even though sport is such a risk, right? You never know what could happen. And for non-WSL fans, Pino, Megan Rapino got injured right. early on in the championship right. game. It was like three minutes in, right? It was ridiculously it, yeah. early. I mean, I remember her saying, I had like walked, she had like walked backwards and felt like someone kick her basically. Right. And she thought Bruno like kicked her from behind and she was like, dude, what? I was just like getting into position on the goal kick. And then she looked around and nobody was there. And she said, that's when she knew. But I thought she just rolled her ankle or like, you know, you know, just twisted it. And I said, just go tape it up. Like, you're going to be fine. It'll see you back out here in like two minutes, you know? Yeah. But then she just kind of, I saw the look on her face and the way she kind of just, you know, shook her head. And I was like, oh gosh, must have been something worse. Yeah. And then have to shift back into the game immediately when like, yeah, because you feel terrible for your friends. Yeah. Yeah. But um, obviously I'm a winner. So (laughs) I was like, well. (laughs) Love you, go. Pino. <laughs> yeah. Oh Love my you. gosh, that sounds exactly. Carter off. Love you. Let's that go. That sounds so. <laughs> so much like Julie. I cannot even tell you. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you got injured. But, but I'm like, I got a job to do. Gotta, I got a job gotta to win this. You would have done the same thing. You would have done, done the same, Lynn. You would have done the same thing. I yeah. love it. <laughs> Allie, we spoke with you back in 2020, Mm -hmm. and I remember in that interview, you brought up a piece of advice that Sue Bird gave you, Uh, speaking of Megan Rapinoe, mm -hmm. where so Sue told you in the wake of the national team Mm -hmm. kerfuffle, is that a Mm -hmm. euphemism to use? Yeah, Uh, I don't really know, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Whatever the word would be as far as you not being, no longer being on the team without really any explanation. Yeah. She told you to stay ready, and that proved to be correct because then you ultimately went and won a second World Cup in 2019. I'm wondering now that you are in this big transition phase, going from pro sports to whatever is next, if Sue's reached out or if anyone else has given you any advice for what's next. I think the advice or the main advice that I've got that I've received um, has been just try everything and anything Mm -hmm. and don't just don't just focus on on one specific thing especially because it might not work out so test everything try everything do all the things um that you wanted to do and then it'll slowly you'll slowly like see it narrow down into something um, more specific but give yourself time um you know don't rush into anything even though there's a lot of asks i have to make sure that I am thinking of not only myself, but my, my kids. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm present for them. So I need to make sure that anything that I do, you know, aligns with somewhat of their schedule, because that's important to me to take them to school, to pick them up. But yeah. that's how I think of it, too. There's offers that come in or, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah yeah opportunities I should say that come in and I have to really think about okay is this going to align with me and my kids schedule and is it going to also make me happy doing it and who are the people that I'm going to be surrounding myself with um is really important to me you are thinking of all the right things (laughs) (laughs) I'm like smiling I'm like yes yes all those things yeah yeah I know I had a smile on my face too because you pretty much just described 
Julie's tra- trajectory, if I'm not mistaken, Julie's yeah. after like, her that's career. That's all the things I exactly thought about coming into this group. That's the nice thing about you coming into broadcasting mm-hmm. is you do have that flexibility, mm-hmm. right? Right. Uh, minus, I will say, <laughs> summers are a little bit tough because it's yeah. like World Cups and Olympics. And, no, but I, I love that you're, about that. yeah, I love that you're thinking broader too. I mean, I think that was the the most important thing I did in broadcasting is I literally told NBC for I didn't want to call the Olympics because I I'd already been calling games. I wanted to learn how to to put put a story together. I wanted to do features. And so my like first six Olympics I did without doing soccer. I just started doing soccer again. Right. Like and I did features and they taught me how to do all that stuff. But like to to broaden beyond the soccer and learn different skill sets is is going to be huge so i love that you're thinking that way and and saying yes like even when you don't know Mm -hmm. like they people know they're not asking they they're asking you because they know you can do it and that you have to learn it right they're not going to shove you in a position that's going to be totally uncomfortable so right i love that you're i gotta say it be the idiot who says yes be the idiot who says (laughs) yes. thank you i'll take i'll i'll write that down that's That's a mary Mary Carrillo. carrillo yeah She's an amazing broadcaster herself, but she was, that was her, her advice is like, I was the idiot who said yes to everything. And then I just figured it out. Didn't you feel, um, early on, maybe when, you know, thinking back and now I'm in my position, um, where you were, um, that even if you were uncomfortable, that's when you would grow the most and yeah. learn the most. Right. I mean, I feel yeah. like that's like for me in soccer too. I wasn't always the best player. I was always surrounded by the better players. And so right. that, that's what helped me get better but I was so uncomfortable in that situation but I said well listen yeah. I have to like figure it out but it ended yeah. up working out so I feel like I'm gonna try to apply that too but I'm wondering yeah if yeah you for sure same. you gotta you gotta search for those uncomfortable positions and yeah. and jobs and yeah and the thing is too with broadcasting is honestly it's it's just reps mm-hmm. it's not rocket science it's mm-hmm. like once you get comfortable and have done enough reps right and those butterflies that you know you're like ah this is crazy i don't know if i could do this all of a sudden you're like i love this i can totally do this (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) like i actually like when i get to a situation in live telecast and everything goes awry and you're like yes yeah (laughs) finally i feel nervous again like you're trying to clean up the shit show but yeah um it's reps it's reps and it's um and it's and honestly, it's doing other things like like you said. Like I know you you've talked about wanting to maybe even do a morning show, which I could totally see you doing. You'd be oh, amazing so at that, mm-hmm. right? Like that kind of fun stuff. Like push mm-hmm. for that mm-hmm. because the thing is, the people who make the decisions want to kind of fit you into this. Like no, you're an athlete. You should do soccer. You played soccer. Why would a soccer player be doing that? It's like no, and so you can rewrite that script, which is, I think, much more doable now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I would love that. And also to talk about like lifestyle and fashion and right. culture and food All those and things other you things, love. Yeah. like day to day stuff, like as even a mom and like a woman and, you know, totally. All the things that would be really fun for me. I, and I will say you have to keep throwing that at the wall, right? Mm-hmm. Like in telling people that and mm-hmm. especially like just reaching out and saying, this is what I want to do. Like keep yeah. saying it to the universe because then people will hear it and then they'll go, oh, okay, yeah, I can see her doing that. And I understand that. So I love that you're thinking broader and then you can decide, like, then you mm-hmm. figure out like what you love and, oh no, this didn't work. I don't want to do that. I don't love this. Yeah. So thank you. I will. I will. You're thinking all the right things. Yeah. It's been fun. It's been good. I, I'm glad I actually do have something to do, right? Like a lot of people end their yeah. career. And so I'm super grateful that I have something to do now. There's a transition that's a little bit easier than maybe for some other people who might not have had this type of path. So I'm I'm really grateful and I'm really lucky and I know that. And so I'm gonna really take a lot of care in these new positions because I understand that it's not given to everybody. And yeah. so I know I have a growth mindset and lots to learn and Good. I'm really appreciative of the opportunities that are coming. We got to get you with Beth Moens. Hey, she's, Mo. the, she's the one who kind of taught Julie the lay of the land <laughs> with color commentary. Oh, I know where you're going. Beth created a sign that said STFU, <laughs> and she would hold it up when Julie was talking too much. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> 
and then we just oh taped it God. to the wall every time we do a telecast. I'm like, okay, okay, I know. I keep talking. I can't stop talking. God. You're like, no, taken. <laughs> now I get people saying, you weren't talking that much on that telecast. I'm like, let the game breathe, people. Uh, you complain I talk too much, and then when I don't talk enough, you're telling me I'm not talking yeah. enough. You don't have to say. People need to listen. I know you're covering right now Gold Cup. Yes, I'm. Oh, how is and uh, yeah, what like you're and so you're watching this kind of transformation of the women's team, and we won't talk too much on that, but I do want to kind of get pick your brain on that. What are you most excited? What are you What are you thinking with that U.S. women's team? I know the Mexico game was. Oh my gosh, that's so bueno. Honestly, <laughs> I saw Dos. I, I was actually on a plane flying, so I didn't see it live, and I saw. Dos Acero. And I was like, oh, we made him to know. And then I was like, wait, what? I know. But Mexico was like unreal. Yeah, I don't know. That was the best really game good. they've probably ever played. I was really happy for them because yeah. they've come a long way. And for them. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like for me, it's more so all the, all the shit off the field that they have to deal with. That now yeah. it reminds me of us. And you, you know this so well because you paved the way to do all the things and be able to multitask and you fight for what you deserve and then you also have to win so yeah it's like proving that they can beat the best teams in the world and do it in such a fashion with quality and consistency and fight and they were good i was like this yeah. is, this they were is good. great for them because now maybe their federation will listen a little bit oh more. god maybe i know doubtful right now but i mean yeah. if they keep up this pace yeah and then, and then you get the energy of like the nation behind them like they they love yeah. and if they can be successful mm -hmm. i mean even just a game like that where they're they're out playing the u.s and right. not only winning that game i mean right. they were good good so, and yeah. um that was really cool to cool to see um because they hadn't they hadn't beat us since 2010 that one game in on that baseball yeah. field in Mexico and Cancun right before yeah, you were there, right? I was there. Yeah. I was watching I was watching from the bench, but I was there. It, it's just nice to see how far they've come and these young talented um women that they have on their team have really thrived yeah. and I can see that. So that was enjoyable. But on the other side for us, we're so we have such good players. The young talent is insane yeah. to me. It like I just feel like, of course, against a Dominican Republic and an Argentina, you're going to play well, right? Because they are difficult to be break down and, and beat, but that consistency has to be shown then against the best teams in the world. So mm -hmm. yes, we can beat these like lesser teams, but then how can we continue to play that way against the better teams? But I think with Emma coming in, it's going to put fire underneath of some of these younger players who might not have had that before. And if they're not going to play well and do their job, she will just find somebody else who can. And mm -hmm. I think with her being that strong personality and having that bluntness and like honesty and know exactly what how she wants to play, I think that's going to benefit them tremendously moving yeah. forward. So I'm excited because I know the talent. I know the, that we are capable of playing a, a certain way. Now it's just having to build those relationships and really put that fire underneath the people who are willing to step up and actually now prove mm -hmm. that they deserve to be out there consistently. Yeah, that younger group is good. They really are. That was a bummer about me official too. I felt <sighs> so awful for her and she was playing well. And so well, even um, Kat, you know, Kat. Yeah, um, I know. I just, I hope she can get back out there. Yeah. And I mean, the versatility yeah. of all those players on the front line is crazy to me. It's like, you just literally, if I were still playing, I'd be like, just giving them the ball all day long. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm just going to sit back here. Here you go, Jaden. Just go. Yeah. Just, I am going to give the best players the ball and that's it. And I'll just be here just. Directing. Yeah. Just directing. Literally, that's it. <laughs> Is there a part of you that would love to play for Emma Hayes? I would love. I went up there at the FIFA Best, and I was like, well, if I would have known a little earlier, I wouldn't have been out in my retirement. Could yeah. have got in there one last, you know. I want to play for Emma Hayes. Uh, I know. No. I 
know, they got I it. I wish she was coming over a little earlier than in the May, but I get it. I get it. And and, and if you can, if that's how you can get her, then I think that's the right decision too. I you obviously too. get her too. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, but yeah, it's going to be a tight turn. Mm, two months, but it can be done. Look at what Juan did. Yeah. In like yep. eight months with us, with like true. I mean, everyone thought, oh, why are you starting preseason so late? And everyone's like, what? We're fine. There's like a whole plan and there's a periodization plan and there's just like everything's laid out. Don't you guys worry. <laughs> and then we get eight months later and we're like buzzing. So I think it'll be OK. Every season I get my mind blown without fail. And it's already happening in preparing for this interview. Mm-hmm. You've been open in interviews about talking about your healing journey. Mm hmm. And even early on in our in this interview, you brought up childhood trauma and mm-hmm. that these are things that you are actively working on. Yes. And the reason I bring it up is because I have never seen an athlete, a pro athlete, so close to their playing days talking about this. And from the outside, it sounds like you're working on some hard shit. Mm-hmm. And what I wanted to express to you was actually appreciation and gratitude for your honesty. Thank you. I feel like we have to start normalizing uh, mental health and trauma because everyone is carrying some type of trauma and trying to heal their inner inner self and me, my little inner alley um, as a child and a teenager and then also, you know, now. And so I think there's different versions um, that I've grown into um, in my life. And I feel like I haven't really, I've always had soccer as a tool to not brush everything under the rug, but to just go out there and forget about everything else and just play with free, you know, with freedom and fun and focus and not really deal with the hard stuff um, and and solve some of that trauma along the way. And now I feel like in this last year, a lot of it was coming to the surface. Whether I recognized it before or not early in my playing days, but I always had soccer to just not think about it. And so now it's hitting me like a ton of bricks. And so I feel like having a therapist and talking about mental health for athletes um, and just human beings in general is really important. We should start normalizing it because all of us, we need each other to survive. We all have trauma some way, shape or form. It's almost inevitable, um, especially generational trauma that we deal with. And so I think it's just important to make people aware and then, you know, others might have a better understanding about where you're coming from and your experiences and who people are as individuals and you know what they've been through i think really helps um get the best out of people because you have a better understanding of each other and i think that's why my team was so wonderful this year because we kind of understood each other on a deeper level and allowed that space Mm -hmm. and allowed each other that emotional capacity to do so so i think it's nice to to talk about it because If you don't talk about it, it just stays inside. And you have to talk about that trauma and that hurt in order to start to heal. So thank you for saying that. I I really value that now. And I think I I said this in the self article where um, I think it's important now that I have these deeper conversations with my friends, even, you know, with my best friends from the national team over the years, like now we're starting to have really deep conversations about just how we react to certain things or, you know, our thoughts and feelings towards how someone's acting or, you know, a job or an environment that we're in or the way our nervous system feels around certain people. Yeah. Like th- these are conversations now that I'm having or, hey, like my parents said this the other day or my, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm having to deal with that or my partner or husband or wife said this, like, how am I, why am I reacting this way? Like we all have like, you know, struggles and and problems and issues, but it's important, I think, for us to just have deeper conversations. I think it's about time. Um, and so that's why it's so nice to feel that support yeah. and lean on each other. That's incredible to hear. And mm-hmm. in my therapy journey, mm-hmm. I had a moment with my therapist where 
I was like, every week I'm learning something. It's like mm-hmm. every single week. And mm-hmm. she said to me, lean into the amazement. And so I was wondering, and maybe the span since your retirement to now, and you've got this fresh start, have you had a lean in to the amazement moment about yourself and what you've learned about yourself or your life? Yes, I've had multiple breakthroughs. I think the the biggest breakthrough that I have had is probably just um, feeling safe um, around certain people. And then that safety allows me to be the best version of myself. So um, learning specific reasons why now in adulthood that I don't feel safe, um, that stemmed from my childhood uh, family dynamic. Mm. And so I can relate a lot to what happened as a child in my home. Um, Not that it was all bad, but specific things. And then now I recognize it in my adulthood and I'm more aware, which I don't think without therapy, I would have never been able to recognize. Um, I don't want to get into, you know, too specific. No, no need to. Yeah, it's like a topic that I think just safety for me and feeling um, like I can express myself and um, feeling seen and heard in a way that now I have a better understanding of how I want to be seen and heard rather than, Mm. yeah, not being able to really understand that or be aware of that before Mm. ever. And I feel like lighter because now I know exactly what I want and who I want to be around and the people who I don't want to be around and don't want in my life, I think it's very clear for me. So Mm -hmm. I'm very conscious of that. Yeah. Mm, So good. I'm so happy for you. Well, thank you. Thank you. uh, You've been through a lot, my friend, and I know. Yeah. This is this has been a windy road so that you're in a good yeah, space and feeling it. better. Yeah. It's worth yeah. it. It's rewarding at the end, right? Because I don't think I'd ever be here if I never was really pushed to the limits of myself. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you understand too. Yeah. Good um, perspective. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Jules, you said windy road, just go, you have to do it. Take me down a road. That's a little <laughs> bit windy. You can see. Uh, oh yeah. Give me some Zach Bryan. Do you do karaoke? Well, usually my karaoke song is um, Summer Lovin' Have Me a Blast. That's so interesting because I have a question in the Lynn game about karaoke. Oh, believe weird. it or not. Yes. Weird. Allie, here's the deal. You are going head to head with Julie in a trivia game. Oh, gosh. Five questions, best of five wins. The good news, it's all multiple choice. I'll give you three options. Okay. If you know the answer at any point, you can chime in. And if you could let us know what your chiming in method is, what noisemaker you've got. I, <laughs> because I'm moving recently into my new place, I have <laughs> a Phillips screwdriver mini and my coffee mug. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> Gonna be happy. That works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're welcome. Jules, what do you have? Because I have a dog that does not like when I use squeaky toys, I've gone to my British phone booth coin thingy. Can you hear that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Got good. it. The I'm theme ready. And this, this is, I need ju- to like, I have to stretch it out. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm nervous. Okay. You're probably gonna win. Okay. I probably am, Allie. I'm really good at this. Yeah, I probably am. <laughs> theme of this Lynn game is come on greyhounds come on greyhounds all Ted Lasso questions oh I didn't Uh, even watch Ted Lasso oh stop it no I know but I met Jason at my retirement party and also hung out with him at karaoke oh come on I love me some Jason There's hope, I think, because these questions are really deep cuts. So it's not that Julie would know them right away. She has watched all the episodes. So a strategy could be see if Julie gets it right. And if she doesn't, then it's 50-50 for you. You just guess. Okay. Question one. Phoebe's mom, a.k.a. Roy Kent's sister, appeared in season two as this character. Is it A... Dr. Sharon's ER doctor, B, a rowdy fan at May's Pub, or C, Rebecca's niece? 
be a rowdy fan at the pub. Incorrect. (gasps) Allie, your choices are Dr. Sharon's ER doctor or Rebecca's niece. Rebecca's niece. Incorrect. (laughs) I didn't think A was going to be the very first one. I never got that one. That is a deep cut is right. Okay, okay. Question two. Zero, zero. Speaking of Phoebe, and Allie, you'll learn that Phoebe is Roy Kent's niece. What issue did Phoebe have in the season two Christmas Day episode that Roy and Keely helped her resolve? Was it A, the hiccups, B, an upset stomach from eating too much ice cream, or C, bad breath? (sighs) Julie. C, bad breath. Correct. No, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't answer correctly. <laughs> Question three. In the series finale, last episode ever, what book is Ted reading on the plane ride back to the United States? Is it A, How to Change Your Mind, The New Science of Psychedelics, B, The Gifts of Imperfection, or C, Untamed? Allie. B. Incorrect. No! I think I would remember it if he was reading Untamed. So I'm going A. Correct. <laughs> yeah! All right, two zero. Question four. What is the name of Ted's upstairs neighbor? Is it A, Ms. Johnsos, B, Ms. Shipley, or C, Mr. Dominic? I don't know. I'm going C. I'm going C, Mr. Dominic. Incorrect. B. Correct. Yes. Yes. I was waiting for her to narrow it down for me. Very good strategy. Wait, was that the last question? 2-1. No, this is question five. Oh, you could tie it. You could tie it. Breaker. Okay. This is the karaoke question. Question five. In season one, what song did Coach Beard sing at karaoke? Was it A, Wide Open Spaces by the Chicks, B, Wonderwall by Oasis, or C, Mm. Bad Romance by Lady Gaga? (laughs) (laughs) B, Wonderwall. Incorrect. I've never wanted to tie so much in my life. (laughs) So oh. I'll, I'll, I can give you the option. A, wide open spaces, or C, bad romance. Would it be a Lady Gaga? Wide open spaces is such a good hit. Hmm. You're <laughs> trying to get Linda to give you a Okay. I'm so what rude. you're I'm doing. Really, I am rooting for you. I, I am rooting for you. see what you're doing, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be a lady? Oh, Why don't oh, it be this? Incorrect. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I was like, for sure, A. It was Lady Gaga. I, yeah. would have, I could see him singing wide open spaces. spaces. Oh. I just would like to give a shout out to any Ted Lasso fan listening who got all five right. High five for me. Yeah, I need those were good deep cuts. Plus, I can't remember shit, and that's no surprise to Lynn. She knows this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good. Most good pressing questions, Allie. What is your favorite coffee spot in New York? The coffee spot I love to go to um, is called Paper Plains, and they support Gotham and me and the team, and they're amazing. Ah, nice. Do you walk in and they know your order? Are you at that they level? Have a, they have a scarf in the window that says, thank you, Kriegs, from the from the oh. retirement game. It was so cute. Bless them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're wonderful. Kriegs, I feel like I asked you this uh, before, but again... Yeah. Thank you, menopause. I cannot remember anything. Um, <laughs> why did you choose number 11? Probably um, besides looking up to you all these years. Um, my mom wore, um, did she wear, I think she wore nine or maybe she wore 11 in college. Um, basketball, Aww. she played basketball. Uh-huh. And then in college, I just doubled it because that was the only number available. So I think it had, it was in relation to my mom, her basketball number. Okay. And then 
that was like the number that I was I mean, who open. wants to be number nine, right? I know. No one was number nine. No one, I, never, I don't no. even know who played on our team who was number nine. No. no. Um, yeah, useless number. Um, no, but I, yeah, and then I, that was the number on the national team. I don't know who had it after you. I don't either. Are you, wait. It was probably passed around for a while because no one really yeah. could fill your shoes. Oh, yeah, that was definitely it. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, oh, I don't want to take it. No, then you got it. I was like, yay. And now yeah. Sophia Smith has it. And I was like, yeah. yay. It's nice. Did, did yeah. Sophia take it from you? Was she yes. the next one? Was there someone mm -hmm. in between? I couldn't remember no. that either. Oh, yeah. It's good lineage. So I'm so happy she has it. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. Mm -hmm. Three good peeps, you know? Right. Okay, high, low, cheer. Okay. We used to do this around the dinner table with my kids. Okay. I'd say we don't do it as much because they're a little older, but this is a good one when your kids get a little bit older. We used to ask yeah. them their high of the day, their low mm -hmm. of the day, and the cheer is for someone they're grateful for. Yeah. And they used to love it. Um, now they're like, Mom, <laughs> I'm a teenager. I, so they're like, okay. Um so it's going to be high of your career, low of your career, and the mm -hmm. cheer is for someone who helped you along the way. Okay, easy. Um, no, this is the high of my career um, is always just being able to continue these lifelong friendships with the women that I've met along the way, which I never, I don't know, in the moment you don't think it's gonna be anything, but when the universe brings you together and you win championships and you're, you know, mm -hmm. basically like forced friends, <laughs> you really find some gems. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for that. So that's the high, I think meeting awesome women. And then um, the low was probably, I would say, getting injured and not being able to play in London when we won. Mm. So when I tore my ACL, that was probably the lowest. 2012. Yeah, because mentally that was really difficult. Mm -hmm. And then the cheer, my best friend in the whole world, who used to be my teammate when we were seven years old to age 18, Liz Mumley. She's, mm. and also through my separation this past year, she came up like a week earlier than expected once the news broke and she came and stayed with me for like a two week period oh. and i didn't even have to ask her she said i literally got a phone call and she says i'm already on my way mm. and that was you know but she's been she's been there world cups yeah. and yeah. um big tournaments and all the games that i've played in dc and even in new york and orlando she's come to everything like her support has been um, pivotal in my career and personal life since I was seven. We met when we were seven. So, oh, uh, and you play yeah. together starting from the age of seven? Yes. Yeah. Oh. My dad was our coach, and um, her dad was a coach too, helping out like an assistant and then turned manager. And um, and it was fun. We, we we stuck together. Eight of us stuck together until we were 18 years old. And so, um, Prince William Sparklers, shout out. The Sparklers? Sparklers. Amazing. And I still know the cheer, by the way. Wait, let's hear oh, it. Well, here, here we go. <laughs> Can it rival my green machine cheer? No, 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 no. My messes with the green machine. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your team? Yeah. Oh, my God. We were the soccer ads. Okay. We were the ready? sparklers. Yeah. Okay. S, S, P, S, P, A, R, K, O, V, R, S. <laughs> oh, yes. Because we are the best. Go sparklers. <laughs> and that's how you had to say it. S S P S P A R K L S. S S P S P A R K L R E S. I don't think I have that at the end, right? S S P S P A R K L E R S. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I have yet to find until this episode. A cheer that rivaled my no 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 I know the... messes with the green machine. That one's close. That was my exact thought. Yeah. The similarities between you and Allie are, are honestly kind of scary. <laughs> Just sort of your mentality <laughs> with competitiveness, yeah. wearing number eleven, going into broadcasting. Uh, uh that was fun. Yeah. I wish I got to talk to her more. I miss her. All right, takeaway, Lynn, you start. 
My takeaway is right off of what you just said. I really enjoyed talking with Allie. And let's make it a weekly occurrence. Yeah. We could we could check in on where she is with the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's doable. How Sloan and Ocean are doing. All right. Allie, let's get that done. What's yours, we Jules? We talk about broadcasting. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just really impressed that, which is that transition from, as we know, from professional athlete to shoot, I got to make a living in, <laughs> in the real world and figure out what my next career is. I was really impressed on where she was. She had such a good perspective on diversifying what she does being willing to try new things, wanting to look outside of soccer, which I think is really important. I think we get pigeonholed as soccer players or professional athletes and whatever sport you're in of you should go to that, right? Like you need to get out of that lane and try different lanes. And it takes people a while, it took me a while, I know, um, to figure that out. So I love that she was there. Like, I feel like that transition is going to be a good one for her. And she's there given all of the turbulence that, um, she's experienced in this last, you know, year. So yay, Allie. Yeah. Go Allie, Proud go. Go Allie, go. <laughs> I have a very topical questions permitted based on what you just said. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. This comes from Lily, who is a JFSLA alum. Lily! I love JFSLA alums chiming in. Lily asks, I love how she phrased this, how did you get big gigs on ESPN or even apply for a job there? When I'm older, I want to work in sports broadcasting and be just like y'all. Aw, Lily. Big gigs. Big, How do you get big gigs? Big gi- gigs. <laughs> um, well, it's a lot easier, Lily, when you come from a national team because um, they want your perspective on things. So I think that helped for sure, but by no means is that the only way to get in. Um, but I think what's would have been super valuable for me is to have more of a background in journalism and broadcasting and have maybe even majored in that. I mean, <laughs> who knew it helped to actually learn about your profession before you do your profession. Uh, so, I mean, I kind of jumped in with two feet and learned as I went, but I think to get really good at television and being a reporter or broadcaster or journalist you have to study your trade and so um i do wish i had done more of that in college instead of pre-med <laughs> why why did i do that um but lily we need more awesome women in sports journalism so i do hope you you go down that path that would be fabulous um and that's why it was so fun actually in the episode to your point lynn being on on point uh to it's what I do, Jules. Allie, to talk with Allie about that because we do. We need we need young mm-hmm. women in there. So, Well, I have some bullet points that I can share mm-hmm. because I needed to write out bullet points to ask how did I get a gig at ESPN, at least to where I am today, required, required some bullet points. And I don't even think you know the story because how I originally got into ESPN was as a production assistant. And Mm -hmm. I graduated from Notre Dame. And what I did was I found every alumni of Notre Dame that I could who worked at ESPN. And this was pre-email. So I sent a cover letter and a resume. And I Mm -hmm. asked for advice and a phone call. Didn't ask for a job. And Tim Corrigan, who heads up the NBA, he put my resume in the mix for a production assistant job. I got that job, worked in Bristol as a production assistant for two and a half years. Then I went to grad school at Northwestern for broadcast journalism. To your point, Julie, I reached, I reached a point where I saw that if I really wanted to produce, pursue broadcast journalism, that grad school was a great option. And then it's a windy road. And I did intentionally say windy, if you want to... <laughs> <laughs> Take me down the road that's a little bit windy. <laughs> so you're ready for some winding? 
<laughs> okay. I worked in local news in my hometown of Cleveland as a multimedia journalist. So that means I reported, shot, wrote, and yeah. edited my own stories. One man band. I'm going to fast forward here. Started freelancing for ESPNW. That's how I got my foot back in the door at ESPN. And how I got that was I sent sent an email, now we're in email times, to the editor-in-chief at the time, Allison Overholt. And in that email, I included 20 story ideas for ESPNW, and then I cold called her. Mm. Then you and I- Good job. Thank you. Then you and I met. That's how you and I met. And Mm -hmm. so I just, the moral of the story, I would say, Lily, is it does take a lot of grit. It takes a lot Mm -hmm. of grit. And something I- thought of and putting this together is what is amazing is that relationships I had from when I was a production assistant are still going today and right. influencing my current trajectory. Yeah. That's everything. In any in any field is relationships. But um yeah, that's that's super interesting. Yeah, and Thank that's for that. that's the Cliff Notes version. And then someone put sugar in your iced tea and then <laughs> boom. You're off. I was introduced to coffee when I moved to Bristol. I didn't drink coffee, but there's a Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts on every corner in Bristol. (laughs) And I start, my gateway drug was a French vanilla. That was always a problem for me. French vanilla coffee from Dunkin' Donuts with cream and sugar. And I think that means it's something like four sugars. Uh, and yeah. now I I don't actually put any sugar in my coffee, but yeah, my wine you, you wrote included sugar. a sugar fueled coffee right. in Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lily, for that awesome question. And Dope Village, thank you. It's so great to be back, and thank you for being such loyal listeners and for your support. Uh, Lynn and I are busy working hard to bring you another season filled with trailblazers who will make you think make you laugh and make you even snort on occasion so thank you for uh, ally for its continued support of course and to kate diaz for our theme music and as always kids remember sing it with us laughter Laughter permitted. permitted The goggles barely even worked.